Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, boy oh boy, McFarlane has stepped in it. Let's talk about it. If Saturday morning cartoons fueled your imagination as a kid and powers your action figure collecting now as an adult, then you're in the right place. Thanks for stopping by and welcome to Saturday Morning Toy Collection. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, like I said uh, a few videos back, um, we're going to take, uh, you know, one day a week, one video a week, and I'm just going to sit in front of the camera and talk to you guys about um, things that I want to talk about in the toy community, things that are going on uh, in action figure, not necessarily go over news, but just things that kind of pique my interest. And boy, we got a whopper today. We'll, we'll just sip a coffee before we get into it. Man, oh man. McFarlane Toys. I'm going to use McFarlane here. Um, speaking of both about the man himself as he kind of seems to be like the head of this, like the end all be all. Of course we know it's his company, but he seems to be the one that probably makes a lot of these decisions. Um, but he probably does have a marketing team, uh, a finance team. Let's just use the word McFarlane to refer to the entire decision-making body um, at the at, at McFarlane Toys and you know, not necessarily him specifically, okay? So this week, um, McFarland Toys unveiled their newest wave um, called the Crisis uh, Wave. Here we have uh, Superman from um, uh, Earth 2, the Spectre, Psycho Pirate, and Kid Flash. <clears throat> this is a build-a-figure wave. You collect all of the figures. You get to build the monitor. Um, now... Um, this is not a wave I would pick up anyway. Let me, let me just start off. First of all, I don't collect a lot of McFarlane toys. Um, I treat McFarlane toys pretty much like I treat Marvel Legends when it comes to Spider-Man. With McFarlane, I will buy the occasional Batman figure just because I love Batman and he's the one making Batman toys right now. Um, uh, but I don't, I, I, I don't collect a lot. I, I did at one point I probably had last year, I probably had 50 or 60 McFarland toys spread across their Warhammer line. I'm sorry, the Warhammer 40 K line. Um, you know, their movie figures, DC multiverse, all that. Um, but, uh, I sold them because I needed money to go to Legion's con. And I'm going to say that on average, they probably sold for between three and $4 a piece on eBay. So I lost my shirt on them. They just don't hold their value. That's not across the board. Of course, there are some exceptions, um, you know, trying to get a hold of their, like their first wave of figures, their, you know, their um, uh, Henry Cavill Supermans. Those, of course, I do know, um, still go for a pretty penny. Um, but for the most part, they just don't hold their value. Um, there's things that I would love to see um, uh, improved upon with their figures. Um, but listen, let, all of that aside, they put out these new line of figures and they are exclusive to McFarland Toy Store. Why? We don't know. Um, you know, you do have three pretty popular characters here. You have got Superman, Spectre, and Kid Flash. Those are all popular characters in the DC world. I can't imagine that these would not have sold well at stores. I mean, I just, I, I can't believe that the reason that they're um, McFarland toy store exclusives is because they wouldn't sell well. You know, I'm not going to buy that. Um, I believe that the reason that they're McFarland toy store exclusives is because all of a sudden they are $39.99 each. Now, McFarland toys has two price points for their DC, their standard size, you know, seven inch DC multiverse figures. They have two price points without a big build a figure piece. Okay. They are $19.99 across the board. And with a build, build a figure piece, they're twenty four ninety nine across the board. That is their standard pricing. All of a sudden, these figures are thirty nine ninety nine. They don't come with anything extra. They come with one build a figure piece or two if, if you got the legs or the arms or whatever. Um, 
there's no reason for these figures to be $39.99 unless McFarlane is just trying to see if they can crank up the price and see if people bite. Okay? Uh, I feel that that's why that they're exclusives because I don't think you can just unilaterally across the board say I'm going to put these figures at Walmart and now all of a sudden they're $40. Um, I think that they've worked out a deal with Walmart that, you know, these figures are affordable. They're at a price point, you know, that, that Walmart feels like they will sell through. Um, if the, if they're, if Walmart is selling these figures for $20 a piece in stores, then, you know, they have to negotiate how much Walmart's getting, how much McFarland toys is getting. And now all of a sudden, like if they just said, Hey, we're putting these at Walmart and they're $40 each, they have to renegotiate that price of how much Walmart's getting, how much McFarland's getting. I think that's why these are exclusives to the McFarland Toy Store is because they want to see how this does. They want to see if people are willing to pay $39.99 for, you know, a figure that should be $25. Now, when it comes to figures like their Joker with the interrogation room that had the backdrop and the table and the chairs and the figure, that's worth $39.99, but these are not. And... The, the the problem here is that this is not just something that is going to affect McFarlane toys, but it's going to affect other toy groups. You can bet Mattel and Hasbro and Super 7 and all of your other, your other um, toy companies are watching this and they're, they, they too want to see how this goes. Um, we know that Hasbro, for you know specifically Black Series, raising the price, lowering what they give us. Um, now, I will say the only standout feature that I see in this wave that could potentially be you know a higher price point is Superman comes with a cloth cape. But are we talking about fifteen dollars worth? Absolutely not. This is just whew, this is insane. This is insanity. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I have no idea. This just doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I find it absurd. Um, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't buy this line anyway. Even if they were all $25 in stores, I still wouldn't buy this line. So, you know, good on you, McFarlane, I guess, for trying something new, for, you know, s testing the waters and see how it goes. I hope this fails miserably because I do not want this to be the new price point moving forward. Um and on top of that, on top of that, when you order from McFarland Toys, their shipping is going to be about $15. So you, you may as well go ahead and throw another $15 on top if you're ordering this whole wave. I do believe that there was a discount if you ordered the entire wave. I think you got a, a break, uh, which may have all set the price of shipping. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I saw the prices and I'm like, this is absolutely absurd. I know that there's a lot of other people out there that are really mad about this. They're extremely upset, as they should be. Um, I just, gosh, this is crazy. This is craziness. I, I don't know what's going on. Um, but anyway, I hope this fails miserably for them, uh, because I don't want this to be the new standard. I hope we start seeing these figures at Ollie's, uh, and Ross and Marshall's, uh, and TJ Maxx, um, at the end of the year, because that's where this line belongs. So what else is going on in the toy world? I have to tell you that over the holidays, I bought quite a few um, third-party company toys um, that I typically don't buy from. I mean, I, I typically um, stay with your your mainstays, or, you know, your uh, your big names. But over the holidays, I uh, I discovered Five K Toys' website, and I love this website. It's amazing. It's really cool. They uh, they sell all kinds of figures from different toy companies. And um, I was able to get the um, Ashura uh, Demon from V Toys. This is the green version with the extra head. This is the LA Comic Con exclusive version. So I ordered this. Um, the red version is up on Big Bad Toy Store, but I think it's sold out um, uh, right now. Uh, but I did get this. And the cool thing is, is with this package, they also threw in a, an LA Comic Con hat. Um, which was really cool, like a baseball hat, which I didn't know that even came with it, but I'm really cool. That's really cool that they did that. So um, look for this review. This is not something that I typically buy, so this is going to be um, really awesome for the channel. Uh, another 
like third party, you know, kind of knockoff company that I got something from was um, Caillou Toys. I got their Joker, the the uh, the Dreamer. So this is the way that the Joker um, appeared in um, Zack Snyder's um, Justice League, um, his cut uh, and from the extended scene. So the so that's really cool at the at the, the little epilogue. And then I got the um, the Muff Toys Vengeance. Uh, head pack. This has the uh, Bruce Wayne unmasked head and the Batman head for the um, Mafex um, Batman figure. So look for all these reviews um, coming up really soon. Uh, I'm going to try to get all of these out pretty quickly uh, on the channel uh, and, uh, and, and see how they do. I, I'm looking forward to all these um, third party things because these are like figures that other companies aren't making right now. Um, I do believe that Mafex is making that Joker. Um, but you know, it's down the road. It's not coming out anytime soon. Um, I will tell you that this is something else. This is kind of like a, a splurge buy for me. I was in target, uh, this week. And, uh, if you guys have been following me on, uh, Instagram or caught one of my shorts this week, um, you will see, uh, me playing around with this figure, but, um, I slept on this line all last year. Didn't, didn't, uh, bite, even though I saw all of my favorite toy tubers, um, gushing and raving about these figures. I was just like, I don't need them, but, uh, I was in target and my target never had, um, uh, Ryu or Fei Long, but my target did get Chun Li. This is the Jada Toys Street Fighter line um, that come in the arcade packages. Um, I don't know wherever else they're sold. Of course, they're sold on Amazon and Big Bad Toy Store and Entertainment Earth and places like that. But um, as far as like retail stores, I've only seen them at Target, and my Target has only ever had Chun Li. So it was a impulse buy. I was just like, hey, I want to buy a new toy, and take it home and open it and play with it, not necessarily have to review it. And so I got this Chun-Li and man, this figure, I've been playing with this figure all week. It's on my desk. I can't stop messing around with her. She is amazing. This line of toys is fantastic. The build quality is amazing. Um, it's really good plastic. The joints are tight, very stiff and highly poseable. Tons of articulation. The paint apps are like super nice and super clean. Um, it's a well-made figure. You know, I always thought that Jada Toys just made like, like little, like, I don't want to say knockoff, but like, you know, generic action figures. And I didn't know that they were like, they're in this, like they're in the game. Um, uh, it comes with a ton of accessories, extra head, extra hands, um, special effects for like her kicking. It comes like with her, her little kicking special effect here, which is really cool. It, that special effect comes with a posing stand to like help her pose with that. Although she doesn't need it. Um, but yeah, I, I got that figure. I messed around with it for i mean maybe 24 hours and i was like that's it i gotta order the rest so i ordered uh uh ryu from uh amazon and uh fei long and i almost panicked when i got this fei long in because his extra head's not right there and i was like oh my gosh did i get a bum one but the head is like down like right there i found it right there so um i haven't had uh fei long out of the package yet even though he's my favorite and the one i'm looking forward to most but i did open ryu yesterday took him with me in the vehicle and uh uh, when I went to go pick up my son um, from school, messed around with him, played around. So if you're on Instagram, you probably saw me post some pictures of Ryu. These figures are amazing. I went ahead and pre-ordered Ken from Big Bad Toy Store. And if you go back and check out, I believe it was Pixel Dan's video from um, San Diego Comic Con where he toured the Jada Street Fighter um, area. Um, they had a Dalsum, uh, M. Bison... Uh, I believe DJ Cami, I think was shown off. So like they're all in, they're going to be doing this whole line and I can't wait. There's a ton. I would love, I would love Sagat, uh, Zangief. I'd like, to, I can't wait to see them get into the bigger figures. I think that'd be great. Um, Sakura, I would love to see her, um, T-Hawk. Oh man, that would be great. But anyway, so that's, what's going on, uh, with my toy, um, stuff right now. Uh, a couple of other things I just wanted to chat about real quick but before I log off today. Uh, these are not necessarily toy related, but it's um, but it's still fun stuff related. Uh, and so that's why I saved it for the end. But um, over the holidays, I started reading, you guys know I'm a huge Batman fan. I started reading um, the, uh, the new comic series from Batman 
um, from DC Comics called Batman Gargoyle of Gotham. It's written and drawn by one of my favorite artists, Raphael Grandpa. He is amazing. Uh, so I was able at my local comic book store to get the noir edition. So it's like a black and white, kind of like an ash can version of the um, uh, of Batman Gotham of uh, Gargoyle of Gotham. And um, CGC was running a special over the holidays. And so um, I decided to sign up for, for CGC and I was like, hey, I wanna try this whole process out and get one of my comics graded. So I sent off the, uh, the noir edition of Gotham, uh, Gargoyle of Gotham. I keep saying it backwards, I don't know why. And so it took about maybe three and a half weeks to get this back. And that was because it was over the Christmas break. Um, but I finally got this back and I got it in and I got a 9.6 on my uh, on my book, so this is kind of cool. Uh, it's the first comic that I've ever had um, graded and slabbed, and uh, I'm really happy with it. I have a few more that I'm going to try out and uh, and send them in. It definitely works best if you send in more than one at a time because other than that it's not really cost effective um but the other thing that i wanted to chat about was that um i ordered one of these little guys um over the break uh, from ally express um this is the r36s uh handheld console and uh, this thing is pretty cool i'm gonna go ahead and get it turned on here if i can um this is a, a really neat uh, system. It may be dead. I may need to, I may need to charge it up. Um, yeah, I do. The build quality on this thing is great. I paid 50 bucks for it or like 45 bucks for it or something like that. Uh, it's got really cool triggers on the back, which I haven't had to use yet. Has a nice interface on the front. Uh, and this thing is a lot of fun. Um, it's got about 15,000, it's got over 15,000 games ranging from arcade games to NES, Super NES, all the Game Boys, uh, Sega systems, Nintendo systems, arcade machines, Neo Geo, um, Famicom, Super Famicom, um, uh, what else? Uh, it's got PSP, PlayStation 1, uh, Dreamcast, it's got a lot of really cool stuff and I've been playing a lot, a lot of old school NES and uh, arcade games and it just... It, it, it kind of blew my mind to think about, like, I was playing through RoboCop, which was one of my favorite arcade games when I was a kid. I don't know why. But, um, like, that game, like, start to finish the arcade version took me about 10 minutes to beat. Beginning to end, right? I can't I begin to fathom how many quarters I sank in that machine as a kid trying to beat it. Um, uh, the original NES games, I played through, like, Castlevania, the first Castlevania game. It took me like 12 minutes, 13 minutes to beat from beginning to end. Um, it just goes to show like, you know, like nowadays, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I snuck 160 hours into that game. The Witcher 3, about 120 hours into that game. You know, when games come out now and they're like 20 hours, 25 hours, you know, people complain, hey, I pay $65 for a game that took me 25 hours to beat. You guys should go back and play some of these NES games. You were paying about 45 to 50 bucks, 40 to 50 bucks way back in the 80s for games that you could beat in 10 minutes. So we should calm down a little bit. But anyway, that thing is pretty amazing. I, I love it. Uh, I can't believe I let it die. I haven't played it in a couple of days, so maybe that's why it uh, doesn't have a charge. But anyway, so that's all the kind of stuff I wanted to talk about this week and toys and what I was playing with, what I'm collecting, what I'm buying, some reviews that are coming down and other things that are going on in my life. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. I super appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this ranting series where I just kind of sit and talk and we're going to do one of these every week and talk about something and it'll always be toy related. Don't worry. So please continue to check us out over at Instagram at Saturday Morning Toy Collector. I am your Saturday Morning Toy Collector. I'm your host, Mark, and I will see you in the toy aisles. Thank you.